Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now, let us make an examination of our consciences. Having confessed our sins unto God, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. There were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. Once I pray, Lord have mercy on me, heal me, I have sinned against you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in obedience to your word in need of healing and forgiveness. As you once cleansed the leper in the waters of the Jordan, so cure us, who have been washed in the waters of baptism. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this Septuagesma Sunday, the first Sunday of pre-Lent, we take the first reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests 
among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare. He shall muffle his beard and he shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he, in fact, is unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. This is the word of the Lord. The gradual for today. My son, when you are ill, delay not, but pray to God, who will heal you. Flee wickedness, let your hand be just, cleanse your heart of every sin. Offer your sweet-smelling oblation and petition, a rich offering according to your means. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or to the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The track for today. Then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Lord, if you want, you can make me clean. 
Words taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, leprosy is a bacterial infection that causes the nerves, respiratory tract, skin, and eyes of an individual. This damage can result in the loss of a person's extremities due to injury or infections. Leprosy sometimes have, has been referred to as the oldest recorded disease. It was first recorded in Egypt as early as 1350 BC and the term leprosy is found 68 times in the Bible, 55 times in the Old Testament, and 13 times in the New Testament. Leprosy, or Hansen's disease, has plagued and continue, continues to plague many parts of our world. India, China, Africa, Thailand, as well as Brazil. The first medications for leprosy was introduced in the 1940s, and it has continued to evolve throughout the 20th century. Although this disease has been lessened over the years, it is believed and has been noted that between 2,000 and 3,000 Americans are afflicted each year with leprosy. Historically, those suffering from leprosy were shunned, separated, and isolated from society and placed in leper colonies. The scene in the movie Ben-Hur with Charlton Heston, who finds his mother and sister in a leper colony, paints an image of this debilitating disease. In today's first reading from Leviticus, one of the books of the law or Torah, we read, If a man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent, his head bare, and shall muffle his beard, and he shall cry out, unclean, unclean. It should be noted that any skin ailment or sore would make one unclean. How would you feel if you had a blemish on you due to a skin condition, not even leprosy, where you had to wear a special belt and warn anyone who came in contact with you that you needed to cry out to them, unclean unclean. You know, we learn that anyone who suffered any type of ailment or condition, whether it was leprosy or blindness or deafness or being crippled, it was all due to sin and it was God who was punishing that individual with his wrath. Not only did the individual suffer physically, but also suffered mentally and emotionally because of it. One of the most powerful passages in the New Testament comes from the story of when two of the disciples of John the Baptist, who was in prison, were sent to Jesus by John with a simple question. Are you the one who is to come, or do we wait for another? Jesus replies 
in Luke chapter 7, verse 2. Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. As recorded in the Gospels, many of our Lord's miracles ended with the words, Your sins are forgiven. Jesus came and comes to restore people who are broken and made whole. Not only does Jesus heal lepers, but in Matthew and Luke, he authorizes his disciples to heal leprosy in his name. Although we do not know the reasons why God allows disease into our world, leprosy is a powerful symbol reminding all of us how sin spreads and of its horrible consequences. Like leprosy, sin starts off small and then spreads, leading to other sins and causing great damage in one's relationship to God and to others. We will never know the name of the leper who approached Jesus that day, but we all can agree that he was a broken individual who sought deliverance from his plight. He begged Jesus to cure him, but yet humbly said, Lord, if you want, you can make me clean. This man was rejected by society, but still had faith that Jesus could heal him. I look at the state of our nation and realize that there are leprosy-like conditions that are spreading among our people. The first is the coronavirus and its different variants, which has claimed over here in America alone 435,000 lives with no end in sight. Our world is desperately trying to inoculate and protect people from this virus and its variants. Sadly to say that there is another battle which our country is fighting. And it is a disease, but a different type of disease. It is a disease of hatred and anger arrogance and self-righteousness and if left unchecked it will continue to spread and to erode the very fabric and the core of our great nation. You know my brothers and sisters those who are baptized in the living waters are made a new person. It has also been said that the greatest sinner is the one least aware of it. I truly believe that during this pre-Lenten season, leading into the season of Lent, every individual should take a deep look at themselves and examine their own conscience. In catechetical teachings, we teach that the conscience is the voice of God that tells us what is right and what is wrong. Can any one of us sing the violence and the hatred and the negative rhetoric can truly say that people are being led by the Spirit of God and the teachings of our blessed Lord who cured all ailments affecting the body, the soul, and the mind of the individual. 
I believe that people need to be like the leper today in today's gospel, who humbly sought out the Lord, asked to be healed, be made whole, and restored. You know, our blessed Lord taught, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It is in freedom and in truth that the healing power of Christ makes all people whole and complete. May we take these words to heart and strive every day to become closer unto our Lord and to walk the path that he has directed unto us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Some fell sick from their wicked ways, afflicted because of their sins. In their distress, they cried to the Lord, who saved them in their peril.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may be truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we offer you the sacrifice through which your Son heals us. May we always proclaim his glory to all people. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your whore hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You give us the season of anticipation that takes us from the joy of your incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting and the contemplation of your passion. As we prepare to abstain from worldly trappings Open our hearts and minds to a spirit of true contrition and of loving reverence for you. And so therefore we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox in Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord, in our prayers this day, let us remember the sick, the suffering and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us remember in prayer all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, as well as their families. Let us pray for all the doctors and nurses, first responders and healthcare workers, who strive daily to save others. Let us remember and pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as for all animals who have been abused and neglected. Let us remember all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. Let us also give thanks unto God for the blessings he's bestowed upon us. And let us also remember all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also, your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Christ our Lord, amen. 
We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his passion and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, to draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the Son of Faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, Grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blade, their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. 
through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ Help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you did say to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant it the peace and unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving Master, awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen.
And now, my dear brothers and sisters, let us offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and I unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, what we have received under our lips, may we receive mentally, and may this ceremony gift become to us in everlasting. body of Lord which I have received in your blood which I have drunk cling to my innermost being and grant that no sin remain in me and who in these holy sacraments and adoration lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Regain their sight. The lame walk. Lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty. God our Father, may we nourish by these sacraments, be filled with compassion and mercy. May we go forth to serve the glory of your name and seek the good of many. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, 
and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. My dear brothers and sisters, again I welcome you as we offer the Holy Mass of the Eucharist. It is my prayer and my thought that God would bless all of us and our loved ones. May God send forth his holy angels to watch over us and to protect us. We will conclude this morning's service with the offering of prayer for health and healing for those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic and then we will offer the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be and finally we will pray for the repose of the souls of all faithful departed loved ones. May God be with all of us until we meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect all of us from the corona COVID-19 and from all serious illnesses. For all who have died from it, have mercy. For those who are ill now, bring healing. Strengthen all the doctors, nurses, first responders, and medical caregivers who are helping the sick. Strengthen them and shield them. For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. And for all those who are afraid, grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and our salvation. It is by your grace that we might turn this evil disease into moments of healing, consolation, and hope. May we always look to you for your blessings. We abandon ourselves to your loving care and mercy. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. 
and a perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.